Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSEs and IGCSEs. This lesson is the third video in a series of three on resistance and in this one I'm going to be looking at resistances in parallel. <laughs> In my experience, students often feel pretty happy with series circuits, but get intimidated by parallel circuits. But there's really no need to feel that way. Just stick with picturing our cars driving along roads and you'll be able to understand. A parallel circuit is a little bit like adding another road for the cars to travel along parallel to the first, hence the name. Now the cars have two routes to take. Some of them take the first route and some of them take the second. Remember, the current is just the number of cars moving along the road. So the current before the junction, where the road splits, here, just gets shared out between the two routes. If the current was 8 amps here, and we measured it to be 3 amps in the first route, then the other 5 amps must have gone the other route. As you probably already realised, the route with the least speed bumps, that is, the least resistance, gets more cars along it, and so gets more current along it. This route, with a current of 5 amps, must have the lowest resistance. So when the two routes join back together again, like this, the two currents join back together as well, giving us our original 8 amps, because as I said before, the current isn't used up. So the current gets shared between the routes, but what about potential difference? Well, remember that it's a change in energy. Before the road splits, just here, all the cars have travelled the same route, so they all have the same potential energy here. That's the same in a circuit as this point. It's worth noting at this point that we assume they basically use zero energy to get here. In truth they do use a bit, but electricity can move through these wires while using hardly any energy. If this side of our power source releases electrons at a potential energy of 12 volts, then electrons travelling along our wires are all at a potential energy of approximately 12 volts before they get to our resistances. Every electron in this highlighted area has a potential energy of 12 volts. The other side of our power supply is at a lower potential, which we usually call 0 volts. That means the potential difference across our supply, if we connected a voltmeter like this to measure it, is going to drop from a potential energy of 12 volts to a potential energy of 0 volts. Obviously 12 volts minus 0 volts gives us a potential difference of 12 volts. Just like with the other side of the circuit, the wires connected to this side of the power supply, as highlighted here, are all at the same potential of 0 volts too. All of our potential energy is used travelling through the components, or going back to our analogy, all of the energy is used by the cars travelling along the bumpy sections of road. We sometimes refer to the potential difference across the power supply as the electromotive force, or EMF. This is really just the idea that it's the potential energy which gives the electrons the energy to flow as a current. Basically the EMF is just the potential difference across the supply. If all of the potential energy, all 12 volts of it, is used just in these sections where the components are, then the potential difference across these sections must also be 12 volts. Remember, all of these wires are all at 12 volts and all of these ones are at 0 volts. Connecting a voltmeter here, or here, or here, is just connecting that voltmeter between 12 volts and 0 volts, so we're going to get a potential difference of 12 volts each time. The potential difference is the same across each individual branch of the circuit. It's 12 volts across this first branch, and it's 12 volts across that second branch, just because they're both connected to plus 12 volts on the left hand side and 0 volts on the right hand side. In our series circuit, the current was the same through all the components, but in parallel, the total current is shared out among the parallel branches as some electrons flow one route, some flow another route, and with more electrons and more current going the low resistance route. In series, it was the potential difference which got shared across the components, with bigger resistances getting a bigger share, but in parallel, the potential difference is the same across each of the branches. So those two properties are kind of the opposite of one another in series and in parallel. You need to be able to calculate total resistance in series, what we call the equivalent resistance, remember, 
but that's easy. You just add resistances together as we already saw when we were looking at series circuits. In parallel, it is possible to calculate the total resistance, but most of you don't need to be able to do that at GCSE. Check with your teacher. I'll cover how to do this for those of you who do need to know in the next video, which you'll be able to see if you click here. All of you, however, do need to understand what effect adding a parallel branch has on resistance and you need to be able to describe it. You're not going to be asked to produce numbers and do calculations with it, but you are going to need to be able to describe it in words. So let's go back to our analogy. If we add an extra lane on a road or an extra road running parallel to our first one like this, then we can get more cars along it. This is why motorways and highways have multiple lanes all parallel to each other, and why we put ring roads around towns rather than forcing traffic through the town centre. The same is true with electricity. Adding a parallel branch gives us more routes for the electrons to flow, so it means more electrons can flow. So we get more current for the same potential difference or the same EMF from the power supply. In effect, we've made it easier for the current to flow, that is, we've lowered the total resistance. Adding any parallel branches, even ones with really high resistances, will always lower the total resistance because we're just giving the current more routes to flow. If we had a really small resistor, let's say a one ohm resistor, and we put a very large resistor in parallel with it, a one mega ohm resistor, that's a one million ohm resistor, then the total resistance here will be less than the smallest one. It'll be less than one ohm because all the electricity which could get along that one ohm resistor is still going to go along that one ohm resistor, but a tiny bit more will also be able to go through the one mega ohm resistor. So even though we've added a really big resistance here, we've actually lowered the total resistance. Anytime you put any resistor in parallel, you lower the overall resistance. If we had a piece of wire with a resistance of five ohms and we put another identical wire in parallel with it, we'd get less resistance there as well. In fact, if the two wires were identical, we'd actually get half the total resistance. Alternatively, we could just use a wider piece of wire. This is why high power cables are thicker than low power cables like headphone wires. Wider wires just work like having more wires in parallel, lowering the resistance. This has been a fairly long video, and thanks for sticking with me. I've gone into quite a lot of detail in my explanation here, because I think this is all a lot easier to remember if you can picture and understand what's going on. So I hope my analogy has helped. All you really need to remember though, is that in series, current is the same round the loop, potential difference is shared across the components, and the resistances of those components add up, giving us what we call an equivalent resistance. In parallel, the potential difference is the same across the branches, the current is the thing which is shared, and the total resistance of all the branches is always smaller than the smallest resistance of any one branch. If you click here, you'll be able to watch my video on Ohm's Law and Power in Electrical Components, which takes these concepts further. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it'd be great if you let me know in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get a notification the next time I upload a video. If you check the description, I've got links to my revision guides, to SnapQuiz, that's my revision website and app, and to SucceedSchool.com. That's my website with full lesson plans, schemes of work, and end of unit tests for both teachers and students. I've also got links in the description to my Twitter, my Instagram, my Patreon if you want to support the channel, and there's links to my other YouTube channels, Not School and Not School Plays. You can also click just here to subscribe to this channel, and you can click here to check out this related video. Good luck in your GCSEs and iGCSEs, and thanks very much for watching.